what's up guys welcome back to the channel hope you guys are all having a good start to your morning in today's video i would like to talk about a very very interesting application that i saw during this year's wwdc 2017 and someone gave a talk on stage about a real-time object recognition application using the iphone's camera so i wanted to kind of build that out for you guys but first off why don't I give you guys a really quick demo here as to what kind of objects the camera can recognize using machine learning and also Core ML. So I have my iPhone set up on a little stand right here and it's currently looking at my iPad. All right, so let's go ahead and see exactly how smart the camera is by showing it a couple of images through the Apple iPad. So obviously we have a banana here and I'm going to bring it up close. And at the very bottom, we have a label that tells us what the camera thinks it is. And on the right, the number is what the probability and how confident it is. So currently it is saying banana at 80% roughly. And let me swipe over to an orange and you see the camera actually knows that this is an orange at a much higher probability at about 95%. And lastly, let me give it this apple here. And it thinks that it is a pomegranate. If I bring it up closer, it might change its guess to perhaps an orange and pomegranate and a Granny Smith. So the camera does a pretty good job at recognizing objects on a screen. And what I want to do now is to test some real world objects by showing it this lens here. And you can see it knows that it is a lens cap at 99% confidence rating. And how about this wallet right here? So this is a wallet. This is where I keep my money and bring it up close. It says that it is a wallet at about 60, 70%. And then we have this tissue paper, which it knows that it is tissue or toilet tissue, toilet paper. And here's what the object looks like. And finally, what do I want to show it? Well, what if I give it my keyboard down here? It knows that it is a keyboard. So the camera is really, really smart depending on what type of model you give it. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about right now. All right, so to begin today's coding session, I want to start by running this single view application that I created in Xcode 9 beta. It's called Smart Camera LBTA. And once it launches in my phone, which is right here, uh, all we see is a white screen, which is a pretty good starting point for us to start coding. Now, how we're going to do this is to first start up the camera on the iPhone device right here so that we can start analyzing the images that are coming in through the camera. And to do that, I will first import something called AV Kit, which is the audio visual libraries that we need to start up the camera. And so here, See here is where we start up the camera. And to do this is a little bit complicated and requires a couple of steps. So let me try to walk through this as slowly as I can. And the first thing we need is something called an AV capture, see, capture session like this. And we'll construct this instance with an empty constructor and let capture session equals that guy. And then finally, we can say capture session dot start running. Now, if we try to run this, nothing's really going to happen because uh, we haven't really assigned any type of capture input device for the capture session. So it's not really showing the camera. So we will now add in some inputs to this capture session with the call of add input using some kind of AV capture input. Now you can specify perhaps the audio input for your phone or the back camera for your phone. So to do this, I will construct this input up here. Let input equals AV device capture or device input like that. And this requires us to use some kind of capture device. And this also potentially throws an error. So let's see what we can do with AV capture device. Well, we will construct it right here with let capture device equals AV capture device, and we'll use default for AV media type. So the easiest way of doing this is to just hit dot video, and you'll get the back camera for a typical iPhone. So we can now attempt to plug in capture device in here, and also plug in input through here. Now there's going to be a couple of errors that 
come up saying that the capture device up here needs to be unwrapped. So let's unwrap it with a guard. Let else return for the capture device. And if you try to build it, I think we have one more error here uh, because this is potentially going to throw an error. For example, if you don't have a camera device on your phone or perhaps uh, one of your old iPods, then that will throw an error. So we have to use a try with a question mark. If you don't want to do the do catch, just use try question mark. And then I will finally unwrap this input just like what we did for the capture device and try to build and everything is going to be okay. I can also run it and we'll see something else occur on my phone. So we get the white screen. However, after setting all of that up, we get this error of privacy down here that says this app has crashed because it attempted to access privacy sensitive data without a usage description. The app's info plus must contain this NS camera usage description. So to fix that error, you want to go into info.plist and just simply hit this add button. And the way I remember how to do this is to just type in capital P privacy and go down here for the camera usage description. And for the value, just say we need uh, camera access and just tab out of there. You can run your application now and that error will go away. You'll also get the prompt for how the app application is going to ask for the camera. You see right here, it says we need camera access. So I'm gonna hit okay and everything is fine right now. So really good stuff. And the question is where exactly is the camera output uh, on the application? Well, we haven't exactly uh, told the application to give us the output in the app right here in view controller. So let's add in something called an output preview layer. So down here, what I will do is say let preview layer equals something, right? So this is an AV uh, preview layer, capture video preview layer, and we'll just use the constructor of session. So AV capture session is conveniently what we just created up here. So let's just plug that in. And then this preview layer, we can add it as a sub layer to the view controller's view with this call view dot add sub layer, right? So that doesn't exist on uh, view, but instead it exists on views layer with add sub layer of this preview layer. So you try to run this, I don't think you'll see anything inside of the app because we haven't specified a frame for this preview layer. So I'm going to do that right now with preview layer of frame equals view dot frame like that. And now if I try to run this, I believe we will finally see exactly what the phone is seeing uh, on the application right there. So you see the orange on my iPad and my hand right here. So that's pretty good stuff. And something else that you can do with the capture session is to set some kind of preset on it, session preset equals dot photo. And this will make the actual output a little bit cropped on the top and the bottom. And you can set this if you want. And we'll just keep this here just to show you what the capture session does. And that's what we get. Now, again, setting up the camera requires a little bit of work. So I would advise those of you that want to learn how to show the camera to perhaps go to my website and look at this link right here. And we have a course on how to show the camera, which is this lesson. And so I want to copy that and just paste that in here as a comment. So for more details, visit this URL. Let's put a space here. And so that camera is a little bit fancy. Let me just show you what it does. Uh, we show that camera within our Instagram course and it just slides in from the left and it reveals the camera like that. So if you're interested in learning about that, make sure to visit that course. All right, so I want to kind of move on now to how we actually determine what the camera is seeing from within our application. So for example, the orange that the iPad is showing, it needs to say, or it needs to be able to figure out what that orange image is. And this is where the new APIs of Coromel and Vision come into play. And the easiest way of 
doing this is to uh, use the vision APIs instead of the core ML APIs. So vision right here, we'll just import it at the very top um, inside of the import statement. And then down here, let me just close this guy down a little bit. At the end of viewed it load, we can now uh, analyze what the camera is showing us, right? The preview layer is somewhat of a proxy as to what we're seeing. So I can say uh, VN image request handler. And this guy, if you construct it with some kind of image, perhaps some kind of CG image, you can also give it an empty dictionary like that. This image request handler is responsible for analyzing the image that we see through this property right here. So the way you do that is to perform some kind of core ML request via this perform call. And so this request is something that you would construct up here with let request equals something like VN core ML request. And you construct this using some kind of core ML model that you probably have not heard of or read about yet. So I want to show you guys how to do that in just a little bit, but let's hold off on that and first figure out what this CG image guy is. And what I mean is what the camera is seeing is some kind of image, right? And we need to somehow translate that camera image to something that we can use inside of this image request handler. And it's actually not all that hard. So let me comment that out first and show you how to kind of get access to the camera's uh, frame layer. So the way to do that is to go right here and add some kind of output monitor, some kind of camera data output monitor. So I will say data output right here equals uh, AV data output right here, AV capture video data output. And you can construct this with an empty constructor. And what you can do with this is to add it into the capture sessions of capture session, add output of this data output guy and just add it in. And what you want to do with this data output is to monitor what's happening every time a frame is being captured by the camera. So the way to uh, monitor the data output is to set some kind of sample buffer delegate, which is a confusing name, but it's pretty easy to work with if you just call it and you want to use this delegate, which is going to be self of this really long name. So I'll just type in self first and make sure to conform uh, the self object, which is the view controller to the AV sample buffer delegate. So it's this AV capture video data output sample buffer delegate. And so once you have that in place, you can also uh, specify this queue, which you really need to specify as some kind of custom queue that I'll just say video queue perhaps, or whatever you want to call it. And then eventually you can monitor what's happening. So if you run this, nothing's really going to show up yet inside of your application. That's uh, perfectly normal. And the final last step is to add in a delicate method whenever a frame is being captured. So this method called capture output with this did output sample buffer is going to be called every time the frame or every time the camera is able to capture a frame. Okay. So to make sense of all this, let's just print something in here, such as uh, camera was able to capture a frame. And let's just also print out the date time whenever it is able to do so. So running this every time the camera renders a frame inside of our preview layer, it'll uh, dish out one of these camera uh, print statements right here. And as you can kind of see, uh, it is printing out this statement a couple of times every second. So that's kind of how that works. And now that we have uh, somewhat of an access to what the camera is seeing, we can execute this VN image request handler a lot easier. So what I want to do is down here, let me just comment that guy out for now and perhaps stop the application. I want to say something like VN image request handler and call this method on here using the CV pixel buffer instead. 
So it's very similar to this CG image guy, uh, except for it's a CV pixel buffer instead, which I'm going to assume not a lot of you guys have heard of. I definitely did not uh, understand what this guy was until I started doing this tutorial. So what is a CV pixel buffer? Well, I can actually get it via this sample buffer that's being passed to me whenever a frame is being captured. So I can say CM sample buffer, I think it's get, uh, get image buffer right here. So CM sample buffer get image buffer using this sample buffer right here. And then to turn this into a pixel buffer, you just have to say let pixel buffer equals all of that. And then I'll just cast this guy, or not cast, but set this as a CV pixel buffer. And you can pass this CV uh, pixel buffer here. And then you can finally say perform request, which you now pass in some kind of request. And you should be OK. All right. So one thing that you do need to do is to uh, unwrap this CV pixel buffer. So let's just guard let and else return like that and everything should be kind of okay for now. So you can build it, and now you're missing this request, which we kind of created up here. So I will, let's just copy this guy and cut it down here. So that is our core ML request to kind of figure out exactly what this image is. Okay, so what exactly do we do with this request property is to pass it into the image request handler via an array like that. And this guy will execute this request and tell us exactly what the object is inside of the iPad. So we're missing these two parameters here, which is model and completion handler. To finish up this easier parameter is to just hit enter on the completion handler. And this will be the finished request, perhaps. And this is the error. And inside of the completion handler, you would you know, perhaps check the error and then print out what uh, finished request that results is like that so pretty easy stuff there and we're missing what this VN core model parameter needs to be so this is going to be let model equals something now what is this something is the newer additions to Xcode 9 beta and iOS 11 along with core ML so I'm going to drag in the Chrome browser right here and to get the model that you need to use, you want to go to developer.apple.com slash machine learning. And all the way at the bottom of the page here are a couple of models that you can use. So I'm going to try to use this squeeze net model first. So you want to click on that and it'll download it into, you know, your downloads folder, obviously. So inside of here, it is going to exist as a model. So let me just drag that into my project and just copy if needed. And now I think I should be in a better place to create my model. So with the squeeze net model imported, you can just say squeeze net like that and just construct it with an empty constructor. And then you can say perhaps model. So that's not exactly what we need. Instead, we need to wrap that in a VN core model because that's what this guy wants and construct it with something else. So construct it and just see the constructor again, which is ML model. And this is the squeeze net empty constructor dot model. And we should be good to go plug in this model here. And I think that's all we need. So some of you guys might be asking, well, how did it know how to construct this squeeze net class? Well, every time you uh, drag in a model into Xcode 9 beta, it automatically creates a custom class for you for you to interface and interact with that model object, which is this squeeze net class right here. So that is what that does. And this guy, you can say try, I believe, and even make a question mark here, I think, to avoid having to do the do catch block and just say guard let else that's. Uh, I think else return is what we need. Try to build. So what is this model here? We should be okay. And then we can say try question mark down here as well. And let's see what exactly we get when we run the application 
again on my phone. So I put a couple of breakpoints here. It's going to hit line 55 first once we get a frame inside of the camera. And then once it's done with the request, which is up here, it's going to execute this completion handler and then print out exactly what's inside of results. So I'm going to hit the continue and you see that it keeps on firing off these requests because the camera is co constantly capturing frames. So I'm going to remove these two breakpoints and it's just going to keep on uh, trying to figure out what the iPad or what the camera is seeing on the iPad. So let me just hit the stop button up here and you'll see that all the way at the very top you can sort of tell what the results uh, is telling you the image is. So all of these results are classification observation objects and to figure out uh, what exactly the camera thinks the image is you can first cast these results into an array and then sort of figure out uh, what the uh, banana is or what the orange is. So I'm going to say guard let results equals uh, finish uh, finish rec dot results as an array of VN classification observations otherwise return and you can get the first object of this entire results array so I think this needs to say finish rec and let me just comment that print statement out results dot first is what the camera thinks the object is so I'm going to unwrap it with another guard statement of first observation uh, observation equals all of that otherwise return and then finally I can just print out what first observation dot identifier along with first observation dot uh, confidence and you should get exactly uh, what the camera thinks the iPad image is so I'm going to run this and every time we get a frame for what's being seen on the iPad it kind of tells you what that is. So I'm going to bring the banana a lot closer and things that is the toilet seat and if I try to perhaps bring my wallet in frame it doesn't exactly know what this is with high accuracy. It thinks that it's a cleaver. So what is the problem that's occurring here? Well the problem is that, let me just stop the application, the problem is that this squeeze net model is not all that accurate in terms of trying to infer what objects are. And I am going to guess it's because the model, the SqueezeNet model, is only 4.7 megabytes. And the model that I was using inside of the better uh, machine learning camera app, which is that right there, it's able to figure out what my wallet is. Hopefully this demo is not that bad. So it thinks that it's lighter. And perhaps if I bring it over here, it's a wallet. So I'm using this ResNet model. So if you download this, it'll appear in your downloads folder, just like the other model. So I have ResNet right here. So I'm going to drag this into Xcode 9 beta and hit finish. All right, so upon doing that, you're going to experience a problem that uh, exists inside of Xcode 9 beta, which is this error right here that says that uh, code generation and coordinated model is not supported for core mill core uh, code generation and please specify this code gen language and so this bug is hopefully going to be fixed when Xcode 9 becomes official and all you have to do is go inside the project settings go into build settings and then you can type in core ml and for automatic you just want to change this to swift and try to run this guy or build and everything should be fine so previously, um, what's happening is every time you drag in uh, more than one of these models into your project, the application doesn't know how to, I guess, resolve uh, these models being automatically compiled into these interface classes. So uh, long story short, now that you have two models in here, uh, you can use the smarter model, which is ResNet 50, and try to run this now and it'll tell you or it'll do a better job at telling you what it, the camera is seeing from your iPhone device. So once you compile uh, the project, it'll send these models into the app as well. So that model file was about 500 megabytes. So I'm gonna assume that the 
application binary is also very large in size. So if you bring the banana closer, you'll see down in the print statement, it's actually uh, doing a much better job at uh, recognizing the banana at around 80%, uh, 70% accuracy. So that's pretty good. And even if you perhaps bring in this teapot, which I hope it'll recognize as this teapot like that. All right, so that's how you create a real-time object recognition app using the camera on the back of your devices. I think this kind of application is a really good way for you guys to start diving into Coromel and kind of explore what other possibilities there are. Remember, if you want to download the source code for today's project, go ahead and check out the link down in the description below. And if you want to run the project, you're going to have to download the SqueezeNet model file as well as the ResNet model file from the Apple developer website. So make sure to go check that out. Lastly, if you want more details on how to set up the camera inside of your application, Application, make sure to go check out the Instagram Firebase course using the links down below as well. All right, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.